All right, let's take you now to this. United Nations Security Council is meeting this afternoon. In fact, it has begun. Let's listen in. Since then, things have gone from bad to much, much worse. As I told the Council last week, the Blue Line has intentions for years. But since October, exchanges of fire have expanded in scope, depth and intensity. I stated that almost daily exchanges of fire by Hezbollah and other non-state armed groups in Lebanon and the Israel Defense Forces are in repeated violation of Security Council Resolution 1701. I emphasize that the daily use of weapons by non-state armed groups is in violation of Security Council Resolutions 1559 and 1701. And I stressed that Lebanese sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected and the Lebanese state must have full control of weapons throughout Lebanon. Madam President, in the few short days since then, we have seen a dramatic escalation, so dramatic that I wonder what remains of the framework this Council established with Resolution 17. Israel forces have conducted relentless airstrikes across Lebanon, including Beirut. The United States and France, with the support of several other countries, have proposed a temporary ceasefire allowing for the restart of negotiations. Israel refused that proposal and stepped up its strikes including bombing the Hezbollah headquarters where its leader was killed. And Hezbollah has continued rocket and missile attacks on Israel. And yesterday, the Israel Defense Forces conducted what it stated were limited incursions into southern Lebanon. Unifil peacekeepers remain in position and the UN flag continues to fly despite Israel's request to relocate. I reiterate our deep appreciation to the military and civilian members of our UN peacekeeping force, UNIFIL, and to troop contributing countries. The safety and security of all UN personnel must be ensured. Madam President, Civilians are paying a terrible price, which I utterly condemn. Since last October, more than 1,700 people have been killed in Lebanon, including over 100 children and 194 women. Over 346,000 people are confirmed to have been displaced from their homes, and government estimates put this number as high as 1 million. Another 128,000 people, both Syrian and Lebanese, have crossed into Syria. The UN has mobilized all its capacities to provide urgent humanitarian aid in Lebanon, and I ask the international community to fully fund our appeal. Since October 8, Hezbollah attacks on Israel have killed 49 people, with over 60,000 people displaced from their homes. It is absolutely essential to avoid an all-out war in Lebanon, which would have profound and devastating consequences. Madam President, yesterday Iran launched approximately 200 ballistic missiles towards Israel. It stated it was in response to the killings of Hassan Nasrallah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corp Commander Abbas Nil Farushan last week, as well as that of Hamas leader Ismail Aniye in Tehran in July. Millions of people across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory were forced to seek shelter. One person was killed from the Iranian strikes, a Palestinian in the occupied West Bank. As I did in relation to the Iranian attack in April, and as should have been obvious yesterday, 
in the context of the condemnation I expressed, I again strongly condemn yesterday's massive missile attack by Iran on Israel. And these attacks, paradoxically, do nothing to support the cause of the Palestinian people or reduce their suffering. Almost one year has passed since the atrocious 7 October acts of terror by Hamas and the taking of hostages. And since last October, Israel has conducted in Gaza the most deadly and destructive military campaign in my years as Secretary General. The suffering endured by the Palestinian people in Gaza is beyond imagination. At the same time, the situation in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, continues to deteriorate with Israeli military operations, construction of settlements, evictions, land grabs, and intensification of settler attacks, progressively undermining any possibility of a two-state solution. And simultaneously, armed Palestinian groups have also used violence. Hamas has continued to launch rockets, and just yesterday, seven Israelis were killed in a terror attack in Jaffa. Madam President, the events of the past week, the past months, and indeed nearly the past year make it clear. It's high time for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, with the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, the effective delivery of humanitarian aid to Palestinians in Gaza, and the irreversible progress to a two-state solution. It's high time for a cessation of hostilities in Lebanon, re-election towards full implementation of Security Council resolutions 1559 and 1701, paving the way for diplomatic efforts for sustainable peace. It's high time to stop the sickening cycle of escalation after escalation that is leading the people of the Middle East straight over the cliff. Each escalation has served as a pretext for the next. We must never lose sight of the tremendous toll this is growing, that this growing conflict is taking on civilians. And we cannot look away from systematic violations of international humanitarian law. This deadly cycle of tit-for-tat violence must stop. Time is running out, and I thank you. Je remercie. I thank the Secretary-General for his briefing. I now give the floor to...